There are so many different mysterious objects out there that even today we're having trouble explaining. For example, different types of nebula, different types of galaxies and stars, and of course different types of black holes. But some objects that appear to be normal at first end up being extremely mysterious once you look at them in different frequencies. And today we're going to be discussing one such object. It is a star, but it's probably one of the most mysterious, if not the most mysterious, stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're discussing the star you see right there in the bottom right. The star that doesn't really have a proper name, but is sometimes known as MWC349, and sometimes is also known as V1478 Cygnii. A very peculiar object that at the moment the scientists cannot really explain because they are not sure exactly what it is. First of all, this object is one of the brightest objects in radio light. It produces some of the brightest emissions visible to us, especially in certain frequencies. It's also some sort of a laser emitter. That's right, it seems to emit lasers, as well as similar phenomena in microwaves known as masers. And more recently, the scientists discovered something else absolutely incredible about this object. But we know that it's most likely a star. Just a super unusual star. A star that might be unique in our galaxy. At least for now. And so let's discuss this object in a little bit more detail and talk about recent discoveries. But first, what do we know about it? So it's an object that's about 4,000 light years away from us, but potentially close to the cluster known as Cygnus OB2. A cluster that, as you can see, is located somewhere right here, and as always it represents some kind of a relatively young star formation region where a lot of baby stars are being formed. And so it's always been assumed that this particular star might have escaped from here early on. But that's one of the potential explanations, we're still not entirely sure. What's certain though is that this particular cluster contains a lot of other mysterious objects discovered in a lot of other studies previously. And a little bit farther away from this cluster lies this unusual star with a total mass of approximately 38 solar masses. Although it most likely doesn't look like this at all. But the scientists believe that it's probably a binary or maybe even a trinary star, with both stars being relatively giant and relatively powerful. And a lot of this is based on some of the observations from the light curve of the star, where the variability suggests that something is orbiting around something else, with both stars sort of resembling normal giant hot stars. Although one of them, the primary star, seems to be extremely bright and also seems to possess very large mass loss and potentially some kind of a disk around it. But so far, nothing really unusual. All of this is expected from either extremely young stars or potentially really old stars that have evolved over time to contain somewhat similar features. But apart from these normal observations, there are quite a lot of somewhat unusual observations. For example, as I mentioned, this is also an extremely bright object in radio waves. No other object seems to be as bright as this, specifically in 2 cm observations, which seem to create an unusual hourglass nebula. Very similar in shape to what you see right here. But moreover, if you were to look at this object in the infrared light, you would see something very similar, except that it would be 400 times larger, at least 15 light years across. But then, if you were to keep looking at it, you would also start detecting unusual emissions that we refer to as lasers and masers, or light and microwave amplification by stimulated emissions of radiation, or basically something around the star is causing a lot of optical light and microwave light to become a lot more intense than it would be otherwise. That's the definition of laser. And here it's actually worth mentioning a bit of history. Mostly because masers, or the microwave lasers, like the one you see right here at NASA, are surprisingly common in outer space. As a matter of fact, when the scientists originally found them back in the 60s, some scientists believed that it was created by some unusual new substance they referred to as mysterium. They couldn't really understand what's causing these masers. But eventually they found the culprit. It was coming from various hydroxide molecules stuck in various gas clouds around the galaxy. And as these molecules become excited, they end up releasing microwave light, which then becomes amplified as more and more of these molecules start interacting. And lots of sources out there produce masers around the galaxy. It comes from various stars, it comes from a lot of different nebula, and even different comets, planets, or even interstellar space and intergalactic space itself. But this odd star was producing lasers as well, and it's most likely produced in the way that you see right here. Some kind of an accretion disk, very likely containing a lot of different gases, seems to produce amplification of different frequencies of light, making the star already really strange. Brightest radio object, and the object that seems to be shooting out lasers and masers toward planet Earth. 
And if the light coming from the star had any pattern, I'm sure someone would already thought this was some kind of an alien civilization. But based on the observations, the emissions are definitely very, very natural. So it's really something coming from within the disk around the star and from the star itself. But so far, all of the observations really suggested that there has to be some kind of a disk of material that was not ejected from the star and it was orbiting around it, producing all of these effects. While at the same time experiencing a lot of interaction with very powerful emissions coming from one of the stars. It's actually believed that the star here lost at least 15 solar masses because it's extremely active. Yet despite all of these observations, there was always one mystery about the star. Nobody knew exactly how old it is. Is this some kind of a super young star that's just super super active? Or is this an old star that's very similar to a typical wolf Rhea star that's going to go supernova really soon? And so a lot of different studies have been trying to focus on trying to figure all of this out. And one of the studies recently discovered something else really unusual. Something that was discovered while looking at the masers and analyzing how they reflect from various regions around the star. Turns out that the star is also emitting a tremendously powerful jet with the material traveling at approximately 500 kilometers per second. And the disk around the star seems to be at least 50 astronomical units in diameter. Actually kind of similar to the solar system. And this observation is similar to a lot of other really young stars, such as the HH objects we've discussed previously, that very often possess extremely similar jets, with stuff just coming from both directions emitted from the star. And intriguingly, all of this is magnetic in nature. A lot of these interactions are essentially a kind of an interplay between the magnetic nature of the disk and the super powerful magnetic fields inside the star. And because of the interaction of all of these magnetic forces, it sometimes makes the star extremely small at the end, but in other times ends up feeding the star so much that it becomes an extremely powerful giant. But normally, these jets are responsible for throwing off a huge amount of mass. And based on the observations in radio light, we can only assume that the magnetic fields here are super super powerful. But the star system in this case is still a little bit strange. There are still a lot of different effects that a lot of other stars don't seem to have, and a lot of other features like lasers and masers that we don't really see that often coming from a single object. Although it's also possible that maybe we just got lucky with the orientation of the disk itself. And here the scientists suggest that maybe it's actually because the disk is just positioned toward us, and so the lasers and masers leaving the disk eventually cross the path with planet Earth, making all of this a lot easier to see. And it was because of these masers that all of these other features were discovered in the recent study. But I guess the question is, so what's the conclusion? What sort of a star is this? Well, so far it does look like this is a really young object that was probably kicked out from that Cygnus OB cluster and eventually started to travel by itself, acquiring all sorts of unusual properties as the major star started to lose a lot of mass. But if this was something common, we'd be seeing this all over the place. So far, this is the only such object known to us. And so finding these exceptions is really what makes astronomy so intriguing. For all we know, in the next few years, the scientists might discover something else really, really intriguing. And for all we know, these super powerful radio emissions might be actually caused by something entirely different. And so the origins of this unusual star, MWC349, are still a little bit mysterious. Which means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos, once I guess we get a little bit more clarification and once we have more discoveries or find other similar objects. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.